University dan satunya dari Chungkook National University. Dua universitas ini adalah Universitas Negeri di Korea Selatan yang pembiayaannya nanti memang masih ada yang dicapai dari universitas juga selain dari riset. Nah, di sini kita membawa dua profesor dengan satu orang postdoc dari dua universitas tersebut. Yang pertama yang sebelah sana itu adalah Profesor An Jin Yi atau biasa dipanggil Profesor An. Kalau oh, kita karena sebenarnya ada dua profesor Han di satu departemen, yang ini ada dipanggil profesor Han. Oh, <laughs> karena ada dua profesor Han. Jadi, <laughs> nah ini adalah profesor Han Cindy dipanggil aja profesor Han. Dan usianya masih cukup muda sekitar 36 tahun. Ya, ya. jadi memang profesor muda. Jadi kepala pemainnya adalah departemen environmental biology and ah. tropical medicine. Ah. medicine. Dari College of Medicine Kanto National University. Kemudian yang satunya ini adalah Profesor Choi dan Profesor Choi ini adalah dari Departemen Parasitologi College of Medicine dari Chungkook National University. Ini adalah juga dua Profesor muda yang memang seumuran. Dan kalau Profesor Han ini adalah topiknya malaria. Kemudian kalau Profesor Choi ini adalah parasit. Lebih ke Helmi saya kan sudah. Ya, gitu Pak. Terus yang satu ini adalah Dr. Jun, ini adalah postdoc di labnya uh, Profesor Han. Jadi bidangnya dia adalah entomologi juga, molekuler biologi juga. Jadi nanti akan saya dan saya. Nanti acaranya memang hari ini adalah mini workshop dari jam 9 pagi sampai jam 2 siang. Nanti dilanjutkan malam hari untuk saya semua bersama. Kemudian besok adalah kita kemungkinan MOU. Eh bukan MOU sih, nah, ya. Diskusi mendalam program kerjasama apa saja dari uh, dua universitas ini yang kita bisa manfaatkan, bisa mendatangkan benefit untuk dua institusi yang terasa yeah. Kemudian untuk hari ini, berhubung waktunya memang sudah pukul 9, saya akan kembalikan ke MC untuk proses selanjutnya yaitu pembukaan dan yang jelas. Selamat ya Pak, Assalamualaikum Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Public Health Universitas Diponegoro, Dr. Budiono Eskrim Mkes, The Honorable Vice Dean for Academic and Student Affairs of the FPH Undip, Dr. Nurja Zuli Eskrim Mkes, good morning. The Honorable Vice Dean for Resources of the FPH Undip, Dr. Dr. Apoina Fatimi Mkes, good morning. Our respective speakers, Professor Han Jin Ki, Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Jun Ho Jong. Yes. Good morning. And then Assistant Professor Choi Song Jun. Good morning. The head of study programs, head of departments, and to all of today's participants, good morning. My name is Nokia Handayani, and I will be your master of ceremony for today's agenda. We would like to welcome you to the Visiting Professor Series, an understanding of how parasites are becoming a complex public health threat on Monday, February 13, 2023. Praise to Allah Taala who has bestowed topic, mercy, guidance, and inayat to us so that on this occasion, we can meet in a good condition physically and mentally happy. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our today's agenda, let us recite Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And to start our today's agenda, let us all pray according to our respective clues. Pray begins. Pray ends. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the first agenda is the opening speech from the Dean of the Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Siponegoro, 
to Dr. Budiono, SKM Mkes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mbak Nokia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Yeah, here uh, question for the academic part about the study. Uh, question for the resources, uh, Dr. Aprena Ramidi, also head of the doctoral program of public health, uh, Dr. Bagus, good morning. And uh, interesting speakers from the Chungkuk uh, National University from Chus, good morning. And Dr. Jun from Kangkong National University and Prof. Han, for coming here as part of the public health in San Francisco. Alhamdulillah, today we are going to going to join with your interesting presentation about the topic related to. Parasit or self-transmitted helmet and so on. Uh, I think this, uh, I think this uh, evening and this morning, uh, uh, we have, uh, we also have a student from the uh, doctoral program and also from the uh, magister and bachelor program uh, uh, for training this uh, uh, event. Uh, hopefully, we uh, we hope we hope uh, that this uh, topic will increase the knowledge and experience of the student, of our student, and also our colleagues, lecturers, uh, staff, uh, and here. Thank you for coming uh, for the experience and knowledge uh, related to this parasit uh, or this topic. Uh, I think it uh, may be different uh, between in Indonesia or the tropical area and, uh, and in Korea. Uh, so you can give a brief explanation about this uh, topic. Uh, tomorrow we will discuss about the potential collaboration. We, we also have a collaboration uh, with the, some universities from the foreigner, foreigner universities. Foreign universities and already I contact to Universitas Ponorogo from the international office. Universitas Ponorogo also have a world class university program. One of them is the young professor. So tomorrow we can discuss about that communities, what about it, and and so on. So. Hopefully, this will be uh, increase our knowledge and experience. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, hopefully success. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Budiono, for the opening speech. I would like to welcome our um, guests online. Good morning, everyone. Morning, all of you. Good morning. Dr. Sakun, good morning. Morning. Okay. The next agenda is the video of the Faculty of Public Health. Yeah. All right. While we are waiting, um, I would like to say hello, good morning to Dr. Sakun. How are you, sir? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for the uh, what we call it uh, opportunity to meet with the guests from Korea. Thank you very much. And tomorrow I will meet you in person. I'm sorry I cannot meet you now because I'm in the other part of the Diponegoro University in the downtown city. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. And welcome in the Faculty of Public Health. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you just said terima kasih. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, moving to the second agenda is the video of the Faculty of Public Health Universitas Ipanudoro. Let us watch it together. 
In 1985, for the first time, we accepted youth students from diploma to bachelor degree under the name of the Public Health Study Program, Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Diponegoro. In 1987, the Public Health Study Program began admitting students for the regular program for the first time. In 1993, the Public Health Study Program changed to the Faculty of Public Health based on the decree of the Minister of Education and Culture of the Republic of Indonesia number 0369-0-1993 dated 21st November 1993. Faculty of Public Health Vision In the year of 2024, Faculty of Public Health becomes an excellent higher education institution in the field of public health in the international level. Faculty of Public Health are concerned in achieving the following objectives. To obtain graduates who have the spirit of Pancasila, competent, have social awareness, and have the UNDIP's graduate profile that are complete and miracle. Complete communicator, professional, leader, entrepreneur, thinker, educator, and miracle, manager, innovator, researcher, apprentice, communitarian, leader, and educator. To obtain innovative research and beneficial products to solve public health problems and to achieve world-class university. To obtain publications in reputable national and international journals, attainments in intellectual property rights that beneficial to the development of public health to support world-class university. To contribute in the public health problems solving in regional, national, and international level. To organize transport. with applicable regulation supported by technology advances to organize cooperation and partnership in education, research, publication, product innovation, and community services in public health aspects with public and private institutions in national and international level. The organizational structure in Faculty of Public Health Faculty Leaders the Dean, the Vice Dean for Academic and Student Affairs, the Vice Dean for Resources. The study programs in Faculty of Public Health are Bachelor in Public Health, accredited as Excellent, Master in Public Health, accredited as Excellent, Master in Environmental Health, accredited as Excellent, Master in Health Promotion, accredited as excellent doctor in public health accredited as excellent the implementation of the education program in the faculty of public health is supported by lecturers from reputable universities currently 
the faculty has 34 lectures with doctoral degrees of 66 lectures with various scientific fields. They are health policy and administration, public health nutrition, epidemiology and tropical diseases, occupational safety and health, environmental health, biostatistics and population, and health promotion and behavioral sciences. In the learning process, the Faculty of Public Health is supported by education staff from various backgrounds, competences, and professionalism. The buildings in Faculty of Public Health are Building A, the Dean Building with two stories Building B, classrooms with three stories Building C, lecturer's room with two stories and meeting rooms Building D Secretariat room of graduate study programs Classrooms for graduate programs Computer laboratory Public health laboratory Unit room of faculty supports And hall Building E Students activities room Building F Student activity center Praying room And canteen Building G Secretariat room of undergraduate study programs Library Archive rooms And student activities rooms And also other facilities such as canteen Futsal field Basketball field Volleyball field And other sport facilities To support student learning process The Faculty of Public Health has 6 laboratories Basic Biomedicine Laboratory Environmental Health Laboratory Occupational Safety and Health Laboratory Epidemiology and Entomology Laboratory Public Health Nutrition Laboratory and Audiovisual Aids Laboratory The Faculty of Public Health has accepted international students since 2016 for degree and non-degree programs in order to support Universitas di Ponogoro to be the world-class university. The non-degree programs, such as summer course program, internship program, joint research, and community services are followed by students from many countries such as Taiwan, Netherlands, Australia, Germany, China, Pakistan, Sudan, Libya, USA, Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Nigeria, and many more. Other international programs to support world-class university are visiting professor from overseas universities, international conference on public health for tropical and coastal development, staff exchange, lecture joint research between universities and with international NGOs. Student activities Internship Partnership with villages related to maternal health Field study practices Outbound Community services Student units activities Research Center of Faculty of Public Health Research Center of Environment and Toxic Material Research Center of Neglected Tropical Diseases Research Center of Reproductive Health and HIV AIDS Research Center of Public Health Nutrition Research Center of Health Policy Thank you very much for watching the video profile of the Faculty of Public Health Universitas in Manila. So the next agenda is what we have been waiting for, which is the international discussion of the an understanding of how parasites are becoming a complex public health threat. This first agenda will be fully guided by our moderator. Acting as today's moderator is Mokkauzi PhD. He is an associate professor at the Epidemiology and Tropical Disease Department, Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Stephen So please welcome 
Move call the PhD. Okay. Okay, thank you very much everyone for coming for these uh, programs. And I would like to say really, really much thank you for our honorable speakers for coming over this morning. And this is Maran, and this is uh, Faculty of Public Health. And the benefits and the, um, uh, the, uh, the cooperation program will be discussed tomorrow. And for this uh, agenda for this morning, we have the first speaker from Kamo National University College of Medicine. And he is a postdoctoral um, student, I can say, like postdoctoral research fellow from Kamo National University under Professor Han. In the uh, supervisions. So the name of our first speaker is Dr. Jun Ho Jong. We can just call it Dr. Jun. And he is the expert of uh, entomology study, including the molecular entomology study, mosquito factor identifications, and so many things. And for his talk, uh, he will deliver about the uh, methods for the research about the factor uh, uh, bond diseases. So, uh, and again, just to remind you that you have only 45 minutes for giving a talk to our students and to all the participants in here. And after that, after 40 minutes for your talk, then you can continue with the question and answer sessions. And for, for your information, the participants in here is quite wide. So we have uh, undergraduate students, we have a master's students, we have a PhD student as well, and also we have a health professional from Ministry of Health as well. So it's quite huge audiences. I hope that you can deliver the knowledge to all of us. And then maybe, if not enough, 15 minutes for the question and answer session, then we can just extend a little bit, maybe 30 minutes for the question and answer sessions. Depends on the interesting questions from our participants or from, from the audiences. Okay, and if it's all okay, then I will give the control to Dr. Jones for giving your thoughts about the uh, method for the research factor. Thank you. So please give applause to our first speaker. Wow. <laughs> okay. Hello, nice to meet you. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Okay, today I want to share with you about the method for tropical disease vector research. Uh, that topic is the, my major. Yeah, you can take off your mask for, for your comforts. That's fine. Yeah, my name is Ho Jong Chan. Yeah. Okay, let me introduce myself firstly. Yeah, my name is Ho uh, Jong Jun. My major is parasitology. Yeah. Not ecologist. Okay, sorry. <laughs> many friends of my, many lots of my friends call me medical entomologist <laughs> because my every work is <laughs> similar to the entomology with the, the parasitology. So. My uh, main major is the parasite and vector interaction. Okay. Today, I'm thinking about lots of uh, for what is sweet of you guys to the topic. So today, I share to the my experience about the research. The this one is a surveillance. The vectors in the Korea. So, is it okay? Is it too small? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. It's really small. Okay. Oh, really small. Sorry. Because I thought there's big screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in this surveillance target is mosquito and chigo and pig. Uh, so, they are. Uh, disease and all of them we will check that. So <coughs> the mosquito surveillance is in environment is the township and downtown and the migratory bird habitat. And then sugar is life field and field, waterway and grassland. And then 
the tip is grassland loan and mountain loan and ticket. So, uh, this is the just the summary. So, target area is in Korea. We have a not too much big. It's North Korea, uh, South Korea. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, South Korea. I'm South Korea. <laughs> yeah. So in Korea, South Korea, South part here and this North part, and we divide the 16 stages to the we will surveillance to their area. So my service area is the capital point. So Seoul and Incheon is here. So, so this part is it's like this point. Yeah. Yeah. So in mosquito and tick and some cow shed, I survey. The first one is the mosquito collection. So collecting mosquito using the black light trap and this trap. Uh, you know the everyone commonly know the black light trap. And then somebody know the BT Sentinel trap? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. The, because some place they don't know about this sentinel trap. They using the the CO2 within the Excuse me. Yes. What is the BT trap? So only my baby knows the Okay. This is how I tell you. The business center trip is, is this one. If they are using the CO2, there are the CO2 oh, boxes yeah. there. Yeah. And then lure in there. Dry ice, right? Yeah, dry rice. Dry ice. Dry ice there. And then the lure, something kind of scenario for the sweat. This. So, using this central thread and black knife thread. <laughs> so, guys use the increase the attending effect when we collect. The morphological and we and we collecting mosquito mm -hmm. after the morphological identification after being the collect quickly transported to the laboratory in the refrigerated state because in this time. We are uh, checking the bioRNA detection. This RNA, bioRNA is the broken uh, easily, so we keep the eyes. And then the pathogen detection clean up to fifty unit per the pool by species. And the pathogen detection task using. QRT-PCR method after viral RNA isolation. Yes. Next question? He just... I don't know, Indonesia is... How, how many species mosquitoes in here? Yeah. So may I ask you? May I ask you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 How many species? In Korea case, we have uh, 56 species. Yeah, in total Korea, most yeah. people. Yeah. Anopheles and Aegis, correct? Yeah. Totally. You meet you meet in Indonesia? In, in Korea? No, no, no. And the previous question. The question is about Indonesia? Yeah, how many in Indonesia? Yeah. In Indonesia, more than 200 species. Yeah. Uh, but it is said that it's in regulatory India, I mean. Two species. Yeah, in Korea. In Indonesia, more than 200 species. In Indonesia, more than 200 species. Commonly in Korea in downtown where some cow sheds, some place there are some 60 to 70 species collected. Yeah. 
other species in mosquitoes up to the some heat of the mountain or yeah. other yeah. there. So, so we using the camp viral RNA inspection kit. So isolated the viral RNA. After that, using QI QCI analysis and then see the melting pot. So, and this design for the the viral RNA, but for the flabby flabby that just universal flabby that detection. So we don't know which fly virus it flex. Because in Korea we don't have dengue fever. Yeah, we don't have. And then, but we have a Japanese and Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. And then, just we should be checked when they are coming to the the dengue chikungunya. We don't know that, so we every every years we should be checked to the some mosquitoes is coming 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 to the Korea for some some the. So human take the, the disease and then bite the mosquito. We don't know that, so we check every year. So we check the mosquito every month. So every month took time. So I make this paper. Yeah, March to the December. A mosquito two times a a week. Uh, two, two weeks was collecting. So I collected mosquito the lots of species and then the major and height collecting is anopheles in July. Totally at this number of mosquito we collecting. Yeah. Oh, multiplicating within the main volume. This, yeah, this one is the main volume, and this one is multiplication. You should be checked the how many multiplicating in the water season or dry season. This one is the dry season, so multiplicating also is very low. And then. Which mosquito collection species? We, we check the species the, by the environment, by red bird habitat, and then downtown and cowshed. Which species? Totally, we collecting anopheles is very much, but in downtown and bird habitat, there has tracks chickens as the main species. So research for the flabby death. Twenty thousand five hundred seventy-three unit mosquito. We detect the four hundred fifty first. So fifty unit mass up to fifty unit pulling there detected the fly virus. So several fly virus detect this. This primer, this timer, so the JEV, one pool, and then Donggang virus. We don't know that Donggang virus which one. Their, their symptom is to, they, they are infected with human or some animal, we don't know that. But we detect the dead blood B virus. Sometimes we detected some. Is that specific flabby virus? Or some flabby JEV? Or later time we detect dengue also in Korea. So we check melting top and it's also. So also. And then we collect lots of anopheles. So in this one, genomic DNA expression, after we check the malaria also. 
But in capital city, my place, they don't have any malaria, positive okay. samples. Okay. Now, next one is the sugar. Uh, I heard that the Indonesia has chicken uh, yeah. Because this one is for detection chicken gunya. So, so instead of 20 units summer, summer trap environment once the month from March to November, we have a five environment. So rodentin rodent trap is installed and collect the rodent. This one is the chigar. Something kind of the lead. You mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. Yeah. This one is the chigar. And then isolation of a ectoparasite and then sugar collection and then using sugar skin PCI so we detect using the PCI method so rodent collection and the sugar might a sugar collection this one is rodent graph and sugar graph yeah. No, no, I just. Uh, <laughs> what's the graphic? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure this one is Korean. I changed it from the March to November, this me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> March to November. Yeah. Yeah. The March, we collect the. Uh, so that is like this sugar in spring and up to the autumn or winter there are lots of sugar but in summer season they don't have sugar because the sugar in the in the their host their uh, biking host they are in just wind season when they go to other, they go down the soil, down the soil. So, so in some of they don't have. So using the PCR method, the uh, three thousand more than three thousand sugar. I checking the Sigamus pathogen. Is using the PCR method. Uh, the one case oriented Sigamus patient in November. This is the past. And, and the method for the the Sigamus trap using. This is the KCBC make the Sigamus trap. What the name of this equipment? Just sugar trap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any special name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can see the any uh, make some only the the research. Yeah. We put the tape, something you tape. So so standing the just just blend. It. And then you are some kind of the sweat. Keep it here. So any sugar or some insect, they're coming to the, this tape. So we check. We can see the some sugar in the here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, get the sugar? Uh, from uh, us. Now, this one we collect from the low low end, mm. and then this one just we using the track. Right. And so there are two methods for yeah. the yeah. Yeah. sugar collection. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so we identification sugar. Uh, okay, for microscope. 
This one we cannot detect to the disease. That's only the weak species in the area. Yeah. Because we don't know in some parasite or some insect they are like their host. Yes. Host habit. So something like the rodent, but some people don't like rodent. So we're using this method. Uh, I see. Uh, when we use the chick or trap, and when you use uh, collecting sample from the bin, and it's uh, is it according to the uh, month or seasonal day? Uh, for example, in March and November, you will use rodent, mm -hmm. and in July, you will use the chick or trap because uh, chick or will. In 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 pattern yeah 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 see the soul yeah like that so so just to repeat the question so how you decide when the better time to use the direct collection methods or when you use the sugar collection track like that because you show us with the timeline from March to November mm -hmm. and then whether you use these two methods in the the long year or just like divide in March to September, something like that. Yeah. The collecting sugar is this March to November. Mm -hmm. But in this one, we're just using the uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Just autumn season. Mm. Yeah. Only autumn season. Oh, three months. months. Yeah. Yeah. Only three months. Yeah. Okay. So because in autumn season there are lots of the time. Patient there. So we, we our in case Korea, the autumn season have a lot of the Chigamus patient. So we check the different yes. Some Chigo can translate to the Chigamus, but another some some species Chigos cannot. So we want to know the which is this autumn season. Which species is the major or not? So we make this design. So, so this one is 37 weeks, 38 weeks in the year. So this one is the 2018 years, 2017 years. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so and we have a 52 weeks in, in the year, so this one is 42 weeks. So in this one is autumn, like the October, September, October. So in, in that time, there's lots of the chigo. So, Lactospiridium scutulare and the Pallidium. Is major collecting. Uh, next one, I try to go collecting. It also collecting March to November, and and three tick trap for environment once month. We use a home environment also. Breast uh, rent and the lawn or mountain road and then. Uh, after isolating the collecting chip in the stereo microscopy, uh, this one also using the the BG trap just we remove the vent and we enter to the dry ice here. So chip also coming to the CO2. And then we collecting to the to the, the trap, trap and they keep the ice on the chip and then using stereo microscopy we ice we identification firstly the species identification and using the PCI method. Yeah. There were there also the SFTS assay yeah. in Indonesia still also. 
What is the SFPS? Maybe the participant not really clear with the SFPS associated with the city Yeah, city of fever within the tropic citing symptom. Okay, that's the symptomatic patient's uh, surveillance system. Then. Yeah. Okay. It's very severe and I can check some, some paper. Indonesia also yeah. has some. Yeah. That yeah. So, density of the chip by surveillance environment. There have some. Yeah, for Iceland, there's lots of the chip there. And then, lone course, so lots of chip. So, I don't know in Indonesia, we have the human habitat because. They are sitting, just sitting the grassland, or just sitting the the rice field. We don't know that. I I don't know that. It's just they are sit there and keep fighting. Yeah. Lots of fighting in Indonesia. Yes, yes. There are lots of the thick fighting uh, cases in Indonesia, but this is like just the opening uh, knowledge for all of us that we may be able to do the research about the environmental surface to understand exactly the profiling of the ticks, where the ticks are, and then we can do like uh, preventions or mitigations before the ticks can be like exploded to the community. This is maybe just the profiling. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. I mean, like give us the knowledge for for opening up the research for the next coming year. Yeah. This, this is, I don't know, in yeah. Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. So, in Korea, it's like that. Nice. And then, uh, take outbreak mortality uh, change. The this one blue line is lava, and orange is leaf, and other is the green. So, this one is April, April, May, June, July, and. So July have lots of other. After that, in September, there are lots of lava expression. So can you see this is hemaphylaxis longiponis and hemaphylaxis lava is orange. Do you know hemaphylaxis longiponis? That is the yeah, species. Yeah. Uh, many many people say it is commonly known that the it's accepted also from the China, but we don't know exactly that. Yes. But commonly known the accepted also from the China. So and some research of talking to the tip from. They are from the the uh, biting to the bird, mm -hmm. and the bird they're coming to the other yeah because the other country, but we don't know exactly that mm -hmm. because we didn't saw the, that one. So just we thinking about the, the bird principle or some kind of has has. Passenger in their important case, and then they take their share into their disease. And, and in lava, in Navi, we don't, we don't, we don't, we cannot do the identification. Yeah. So just only being and other states in identification. Mm -hmm. And also, this one is different method for explanation. Uh, the, the first one is the uh, tick trap, but the second method is flagging method. The flagging, you know that? Okay. Something kind of the token yeah. you flag to the land. Okay. So, this means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reflecting to the chica 
in using the flagging vessel. Mm -hmm. The white cotton is see easily. Yeah. How big is that the, the, the fiber? How big is that the fiber? The um, cotton, the button? Uh, How much? Oh, yeah. Big dimension. Uh, just big dimension. Uh, just try to play it. I mean like the meters, the length uh, and the white white. One meter five centimeter. Oh one one meter okay five centimeter. Uh, Sorry, you uh, use the unpacked to get the the I mean you use a them or just for this, like photo, do you can you use the attractants yeah. for the flagging method? Yeah, we are using just 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 play, just just a cotton, just, just a cotton. Yeah, yeah. A cotton. yeah. 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 <laughs> so we just put on the ground yeah. and then like maybe shape it a little bit. Why can't come the 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 No, they didn't come. Uh -huh. Just Changes on text. Mental. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that I just want to check. I think they have a biological behavior that they in some insert they build on our they build the skin our environment. And then they build come to the us. So the fighting method to catch the fit in the environment. Yeah, yeah. So in the afternoon, it's like the eleven AM to the two PM <laughs> is can easily be black. Yeah. Are they underneath? Or are they on top of the cottons? Mm. The fixed. Yeah, they fix like this. Oh, case by case. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because you you know you know that thick is uh, there has like it's like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So easily to catch the cotton. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are any any more force or mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So we also Testing to accept yes, but uh, in my case, more of the negative accept yes. But you know, Jeju Island? Yeah. Yeah, Jeju yeah. Island has lots of accept yes, has two versions, has separate. Because some lots of Chinese uh, traveler came to the Jeju Island. So, they can translate to the that I said yes. We we just commonly know that we don't know their exact reason. So in Korea, every year, uh, every place they are checking to the these three horse horsekeeper, chiga and pigs. There are some in kind of the. Uh, I saw them uh, coming to Korea or operate there every year. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you so much, Dr. Jun, for giving us really so much insights or um about the fix, about the chiga, about the other things as well. And I just want to highlight the most important thing and really interesting for us is the methods that they are using for the fig collection or chiga collection from the environment or even from the hooks. This is a new thing for us. I think we can just modify and then maybe we can do like profilings and then do the same things or modify the track methods. Maybe we can get kind of the uh, X methods for this. Um, and also from the audiences, from the Zoom, if you have any questions, we have uh, plenty time for asking the questions.
So you can just ask the questions uh, from this from this room. Also, if you have any question, just raise your hands. Uh, yes, Mandika. Your previous previous uh, slide, you, uh, you show the slides. the what we do collecting the table, the table. Yeah, this one. No, no, no. Next. The table, the table. Next. Table. Table. Next. Next. This yeah. one. Okay. Uh, this is a related. Uh, this pattern uh, may related to the environment and environmental condition. Uh, uh, if if we if we read this data in July, uh, the 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 sample is uh, high. Uh, the highest sample is in July, I think. Yeah. Uh, for the some uh, species, uh, it's it's correlate it's it's correlate to uh, environment condition. For example, uh, volume of the rain and or temperature or. Uh, immediately. Yeah, in Korea we have a uh, uh, summer season starting June to the September. Okay. So in this time we can cover hot, very hot. Oh, right. <laughs> so and then rain. Yeah, Marja Arvine Ora. Marja Arvine Ora. Yeah. 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 The lane is the this season in July, a lot, and then August also a lot. Mm -hmm. June to July, lane. So there is a lot of the lake pool. Yeah. yeah. So we guess anopheles uh, or something mosquito there in that time can outbreak. Related to the breeding places. Yeah, I think so. Because in Korea, mostly in June, July, the early years of summer, they have really huge rains. And then during that time, uh, can create the uh, breeding places. And soon after, the rain uh, drops. And then the mosquito might find the breeding place, the suitable one, to grow and to lay eggs. And then finally, you can see like on August, September, then they will increase the uh, usually malaria or other mosquito or diseases. That's the situation in Korea. But for Indonesia, that we have really huge rains, and then we may get the different, different profilings yeah. and different diseases outbreak. Yeah. So this is the different thing from these two countries. They have really just very short rainy seasons, yeah. but for Indonesia, it's like all year long we have a rain. Wow. So that's a thing. Yeah. We have late season and dry season. Late season, um, late season. Um, yeah. Literally, yes, like that. But yeah. somehow yeah. yeah. in another, like because of the climate changes, yeah. then yeah. some in, in, in the dry season we can also find like rain. Uh, rain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the situation. So mixed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the situation. I think you are also checking the Sabala. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any more questions from Oh yeah, we have uh, maybe questions from the audience online. No, no questions? From the chat button? Okay, maybe Dr. Martin will ask the questions about the methods or the other things. Yes. I just want to confirm about yeah about uh, the identifying uh, from a mosquito and then the other uh, organism like uh, and You use uh, maybe like a PCR on the what is it, the classical. Uh, identify uh, and use the, the determinant book like that. Yeah. yeah. How to uh, identify the species? The uh, same thing with the BCR. Uh, using the mosquito, there is like education and book. 
Yeah. And then how to you you identify identify as an author? Just keep the other teacher. We got it in Indonesia. We we yeah we a common in a classical a technique like use the determinant book and the key book yeah yeah determinant key. Sorry, yeah, we have a key books in just only Korea species because no, you know that Korea is very small. Small, but it's big. Small, 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 small area. So we have a small species there. So in history, historically, and some Japanese or some old professors make up take up the some key key books, key books. Yeah. So we know easily to the identification, yeah. oh. and then sometimes we don't know this species. We using the PCI, mm -hmm. and so so the species, check the species. Yeah, to reconfirm yeah. the microscope identifications results, isn't it? Yes, right. Yeah. So okay. in two thousand seven and two thousand eight, yeah. we uh, know the new species in Korea. Mm -hmm. So we give you the name. Yeah. So Anopheles species. Okay. What is that species? Anopheles flying. Flying. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So they found a new species from new species. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. From this identification, the first thing that they did is confirming using the microscopes as yeah. the morphologically uh, uh, identifications using the uh, key books. And then for the reconfirming, yeah. then they use the PCR identification using specific primers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If we have a chance, we can make up the Indonesia species. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. So this is very potential for us to use find the new. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's really a big potential for yeah. us. Like the biodiversity of the most yeah. river itself is quite yeah. huge. And mostly we rely on the microscope identification just morphologically. But yeah, you know, like we have so much uh, fields, and then if the PCR, then it's really huge. Yeah, true. Places. Yeah, true. And then we, we may get the new species as well in yeah. if we can perform the PCR well. I think we are starting the small small part. part. True. Yeah. We need to have isolate the microscope. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. taking into account the wine yeah. in Indonesia, we won't feel subject too much here. Yeah. The, uh, the Iceland also. Yeah, yeah. The, the study like you maybe maybe you have some suggestions for us to make a collaboration between the University of Indonesia and this part into this and then yeah. that part into another yeah. character of research. Yeah, we have really good resources. I mean, like, yeah, mostly there is abundant in Indonesia and the parasites <laughs> yeah, It's too much work here. Abundant, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it's really wide opening for all the collaborations. We hope that we can, we can go as far as for this. Yeah. Okay, uh, and okay. then, uh, how you uh, not get with your feet? Yeah, we collect three, but it's not too much in Korea cases. But we have, yeah, we have to explain. We have three, but the uh, issue is uh, because uh, this uh, research is uh, majorly supported by uh, Korean CDC. And then they care about the fact that the disease and the uh, cake and the kind of the trans mites and mosquitoes are major factor in our country. Mm -hmm. So the three was uh, quite neglected. So unless we found the police, they keep us collected and then doesn't pull that. Okay. Because they are not well known about the transmission. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's a kind of empty place. Yeah. So you can smile. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we can uh, <coughs> we collect the feed and then we can provide uh, that is uh, maybe a mousy uh, ever the fruits of the mindset of the the roast Because the lion roast pie, because the fee is a member of the roast pie family, and then because of, you know, the roast pie family is a very famous with enormous money, the rest, yeah. and then a lot of power, and then one of the members, I saw the member. So one lady, she got some hobby. To research one free, and the sheep like the whole fleece from all the world, yeah. and then made a shoes group. Mm -hmm. It's a volume set until volume seven and something else. So basically, we have to care of this group first, mm -hmm. and then finally, we can do additional mm -hmm. other things. I think the sheep like the lot of this is not only for this one. Yeah, she even have a Christmas group for you. Sounds mm -hmm. really interesting. <laughs> okay. Any more questions from the audience? If you want oh, to sorry. contact me, so good six eighty seven at gmail dot com. Yeah. yeah. Or, what's that? Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Yeah. I send you the some mass all the words on. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Saya mau bikin interesting jadi dari Dr. Jun sendiri kalau memang ada pertanyaan atau ada yang metode yang belum jelas bisa langsung kirim email ke beliau uh, atau bisa melalui saya nanti kita akan diundang untuk mendapatkan bagaimana sih metode pakai yang fracking atau metode yang lainnya itu seperti apa atau kan mungkin nanti nanti bertanya bisa nggak kita dikasih satu seperti itu nanti bisa kita coba sounding dan mereka kemudian nanti kita coba aplikasikan di Indonesia seperti itu jadi untuk partisipan untuk para mahasiswa dan juga health profesional kalau memang ada pertanyaan di sini yang memang akan coba ditanyakan bisa saja nanti lewat saya atau bisa dikirimkan langsung ke beliau terserah nanti untuk metodenya seperti apa bisa bisa ditanyakan seperti itu ya Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. for uh, answering the question. And this is the end of the first speaker's talk. And then uh, we'll move to the next speaker. But before that, I will uh, give the control back to our MC. And I hope you guys enjoy with our programs. And I hope that everyone here can get the benefits from the first speaker. And we'll move forward for the uh, second speaker. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much for um, Dr. Fauzi and also for Dr. Kion for the interesting materials. Actually, at first I didn't know what is steak, what is sugar, and now I know a little bit about it. <laughs> because my basic is health promotion about people, now I need to learn more about, teach about small things, <laughs> small animals. Okay, thank you very much. So moving to the second speaker is the assistant professor of Choi Sanju about the morphology and taxonomy of Kamil and how it becomes public health threat in developing country. So uh, the whole session will be delivered by our moderator, acting as our moderator is Mrs. Lisa Tusariana, SKM M F H. To Mrs. Lisa, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Nadia, for recording, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the opportunities. Now, uh, we move to the second speakers. We have a great speakers in, in today. Uh, so, first, we will know. He is a professor, Song Jun Choi. I'm sorry if I want to pronounce okay. your name. <laughs> sorry. Uh, and uh, he is from Department of Parastology School of Medicine, Chungbuk National University. And he uh, has a lot of research experience uh, re related with the parasitology, especially in uh, helming, helmingology. And if I read the publication, maybe it's not enough for one day <laughs> because it's uh, so much for publication. But uh, today we can share a lot of knowledge about the 
terminology. So from Choi, the class is here. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm from the Chinese. Her pronunciation is Chinese and Pocket, so don't worry really about it. Yeah. yeah, actually, one day I asked by uh, Dr. Mao's methods this uh, presentation, and just so uh, the audience uh, was composed with just some uh, lecturers who were researchers and yeah. some like, high level researchers. So at the beginning, I just prepared my presentation for the Experts, but soon after I realized that uh, this session can be participate with other uh, audiences like the uh, students. So at that time, I just got concerned and then tried to change everything. And then, uh, yeah, first this kind of excuse, but uh, he let me know about the kind of long date. And then uh, I lost the three days to be prepared. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> unfortunately, the, so maybe some slides are not well ordered, but it's a list carefully and they got as much information as possible. Yeah, although to my uh, topic is uh, morphology and taxonomy of hemisology and then about the trees of the developing country, but Mostly my uh, topic, uh, my talk is uh, composed with uh, my research and uh, my life in this field. Yeah, I, I used to show this picture to everybody before I start my research, uh, talking about my research. Uh, you can see the sea coast and the rocks and there's a water and you can see, you may can see a lot of seagulls and seabirds. So many of people just think, oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful place. I want to see it, and then it seems like a very active or uh, looks nice. But at the same time, when I was uh, very young, uh, just a light, light after I realized that animals and even humans can get parasites inside, then my my interest was just uh, focused on parasites inside the other animals and humans' body. So I start my research. And I tried to, I, uh, going up to my, uh, from my to my supervisor. Actually, my supervisor, he didn't uh, have much interest on the educating his own students, but at least he have a, a great, uh, he have a really nice things to me because he gave me lots of chances to do my own research. Although, but he didn't treat me. But at least uh, I have a lot of chance to visit another place of the world. So I visit in Tanzania mm -hmm. to collect fishes and other animals, parasites. You can see this one is a lion fish. Lion fish. Can I collect uh, this kind of parasites? And also I have a chance. Okay, I wear the T-shirt of a zebra, and it's a zebra interesting. And also, I found a lot of uh, flies inside. Wow. And also, I, I had an experience to build my small lab in the field. And then, oh. and I was I might be bitten by jet flies as well. Also, I had a chance to visit the Antarctica. So I work with the penguins, and then I also get some parasites from penguins, and sometimes I investigate it. I had a chance to see the other animals, like a rare kinds of rare animal, like the sea bubbles. And also I have a lot of chance to uh, check human feces as well, because we usually when we are, when we do did our own body. To other countries, since Cambodia. So we investigate the people's uh, the balance of the parasites first, and later we give them fill, and then of course we do some chemotherapy to make them uh, induce diarrhea, and then we collect the parasites from here. And even China. Now the China is a said the developed developed country, but they still have a lot of parasites. So, during this kind of course, and yeah, almost uh, several couple of years, I collect huge collections of the hyacinths. And of course, I love to study. 
But nobody teaches me how can I identify that. And so I try to contact a lot of uh, people in the world, in the, mostly European parasitologists, and then I learn from, from, learn from books and literatures, and as many as possible I collect it. But nobody teaches me. So at, at the beginning I try to ask to my seniors, because uh, in my lab I also have some seniors working period of parasitology. But at the moment, they are just uh, concentrated to uh, the field of molecular biology and then they suggested to me, okay, you may can do PCR and then you can get the research of identification. So, I just follow their way and then I got research like this. Because my uh, materials, my specimens are mostly collected from wild animals and then other somewhat uh, parasites which have never been report reported before with the molecular waste. So that way was uh, just useless. So I tried to get uh, knowledge on this field and then it's the beginning of my research. So that in that time, I I reported a lot of new and unrecorded species in, in my country. So I draw myself, I measure, and then I check myself, and also made us a list of the Tanzania and the Antarctic animal as well. But the, and during the time, I didn't. Uh, I visited several times to the Society of Korean Parasitologists and also uh, communicated with the other parasitologists a lot. And then I never can, uh, never possible to meet single person who majoring and studying same field with me. So until that time, I didn't realize and I didn't have an interest to why there's uh, not many person like me. But certainly at uh, when I checked the old literatures, and then uh, I realized that this this person passed away. Uh, this person just passed away a couple of years ago, and he's an emeritus professor, senior Joe. When he was uh, president of our society, he said like these things, and the fact is, he says like uh, because Korea was very poor country in the past, especially after Korean War. Yeah, I know the Indonesian also uh, support us a lot at uh, our recover to Malaysia. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> and then, uh, because at that time we are very poor, and then our main interest was to uh, recover our economy and our life, and then we want to build our safety, whatever others. So, Connected with the, the trends of research at the moment, 1950s, 60s, because uh, European and American researchers began to expand their territory to molecular or chemotherapy or something, uh, eradication of parasite itself, Korean parasitologists also just uh, go into that blue and then only focus to research on that field only. So, the research was um, just uh, like uh, my field, like the uh, taxonomy or multiple identification or some other related research with the wildlife was uh, just uh, totally illegal. And soon after, I just realized this trend is going to happen now in all of the world. So, likely with our country, my country, maybe. In one of the countries, I saw so many uh, students from developing countries like Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and others, but mostly they focus on the trends. But actually, they need their own country about the basic knowledge what kind of parasites they have, what kind of list, and then which are main concern to humanness. But most of the people just concentrate the kinds of fancy and the new technology or something nice. So, because of the things, now the taxonomists 
are going to layer and then just treat it as a endangered species in field of scientists. But the morphological identification is still important. Actually, the um, morphological identification is very simple. So it's just uh, likely as a uh, we recognize each other people's face, it's just uh, recognize something by uh, uh, the morphological shape, like appearance or size, whatever it is. And then, this is uh, actually the basic tool for classifying the species. And then you know taxonomy is a uh, taxonomy is the, the, the study of the distinguishing and classifying the species by species. But actually, it's very important in field of medical parasitology and also medicine itself because of taxonomy means I mean the identification means the accurate diagnosis. So it must be done, but uh, it's a usually neglected in this moment. Yeah, maybe all the people know what the uh, name of this, what the species of this picture. What is it? Bandera tigris. Oh, it's in Indonesia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a uh, tiger. So we can recognize this thing because uh, it has a, a shape, looks like a cat, and with the stripes, and what about the small possible yeah. characteristics? <laughs> The morphological identification is uh, actually the fastest known diagnostic method because we can recognize when we know enough information, we have information, we can use the information to identify something. So it's uh, just a, as like uh, I recognize his face and his face and his face, it's uh, instantly we can do the diagnosis at the same time. And it's a costly pattern. We can just use my own glucose. Nothing, nothing, nothing even more. And also, it's a very suitable method, especially for the, the limited resources countries. And by specificity, although because it, although it should be supported by the information, and also it's a still critical diagnostic method, and it can make a species, at least uh, unless we don't have uh, enough information, we can at least uh, we can copyright some species to some groups. And then because the taxonomy is a uh, study of the group, and then the shared characters, sometimes it can be a very important factors for diagnosis and also treatment. Yeah. We can use morphological identification for all kinds of parasites, cycles, and also tissues and specimens, whatever others, unless we can see, then we can use these morphological identifications. So you can, we can see this species have a parasite at least. And then if we know about the morphological characteristics of the some typical parasites, we may can identify it. And then you this thing as well. But, on, uh, but of course, we have to remember these uh, knowledge and methods to method to see must be here. Yeah, in Korea, yeah, many people just saw that Korea is a developed country, and compared with our past, like the seventy years ago, that time the infection rates inside the Korea was uh, up to high over, not up to over 8%. So, among 10 of the Koreans, at least 8 people impacted with at least one species of parasites. Mm -hmm. But now, because uh, during the time Korea have a kind of a fear against the parasites, because uh, the government do a lot of uh, advertise on parasite disease, and then people was uh, emphasized uh, by the government about the paras parasitic disease are uh, kinds of poverty disease and poor disease. And the people don't want to see themselves uh, poor. So 
Koreans are trying to eradicate everything, and then nowadays the situation in Korea is uh, going like uh, people. Uh, people are so we we may don't have a parasite disease. So problem happens. Although this kind of uh, speech, some things were found by the doctors. Now they don't have a much skill and they don't have experience to see. So they just the salt, these are kinds of parasites, and then they find that try to find that similar things to from hospital only. And in this case, the doctor just to give a parasite parasiticide drugs to the patient several couple of weeks, but the patient still argue. And later, when after I, uh, they asked it to me, I just realized that it's not parasite, but it's a coming from the bottom of the toilet. And another case as well. So this one is a tissue, histological sections. But the doctor, they found uh, these things from the side of the bed. Because the patient have a thyroid mess, so doctor physicians they took it off and then do histological section and found it. But at the time they don't have enough knowledge. So also at the same time they give a lot of pills to the patients, but they didn't know it works or not. So just after I got this picture, I explained it. I don't know why this thing is uh, is uh, just uh, being inside the, the thyroid mass, but actually it's also for the face. You can see the coxa and placenta, femur and other. But I cannot uh, identify it as well because I don't know the shape of this particular thing. But at least I know these are some labels also, maybe insect. But at the same time, the morphology also have a disadvantage as well. So I explained. Without experience and knowledge, it's very ineffective. So I, I show you that Anneli made the doctors already so it's a shape, but they cannot recognize it. And for small specimens, without marking fine tumors like their microscope, it also not available. I'm an expert on the identifying the morphological uh, characteristics, but with a microscope, even myself, I cannot see the parasites here inside the pieces. And also have a problem because uh, uh, if the species are very closely related and then very similar, it's not available to distinguish by them. And this time problem is a uh, I few uh, few slides before I said it the best is well, but <laughs> but uh, it is uh, for the parasite or something material. PT uh, PT have uh, enough information already, so without information, it took a lot of time. So we can use we should use these things. And then uh, it's uh, some part of my lateral dissertation. And they, they are not very similar, but all different species. Yeah. yeah. So, although morphology is very valuable and then very important tool for the diagnosis of parasites, but uh, it also has uh, limitations. So we have yeah. to <laughs> conjugate lots of other things as well. Yeah. So especially like uh, cellular investigation, molecular analysis, and also ecological practice. So uh, we have to get trained, trained to do uh, possible to do the morphological identification, and also we have to equip ourselves to possible to use other tools together. So the pre actually uh, at the beginning I tried to uh, increase the volume of uh, this part methodologies because uh, I realized that many parts of the world and many people who care in parasite especially hemorrhages sometimes they cannot distinguish 
the parasites in the high heart cell, likely uh, they cannot distinguish nematodes and trematodes. Mm -hmm. Trematodes and sessions. So, need to understand the group of parasites first. And need to prepare by accurate procedures for each taxa. So I made already uh, almost 10 additional slides for this one, but I erase now. If I have an additional chance to give a lecture about this one, maybe I can do it over three hours and more. It's a quite huge volume to not easy to explain it in a single uh, speech. And to do the morphological identification, the specimen must be fresh or prepared by accurate procedure. So these are uh, maybe I delete because I need to explain in this one in here because uh, in later slide I already deleted. So maybe there's a new one. Ah, maybe. Yeah. Ah, okay. So when we uh, measure the size. Do you know how to we how can we measure measure the size of the birds? So in this picture, it said like uh, this bird have a average height like this way, but in the scientific ways, for the taxonomic purpose, we have to measure them as like this way. So if we give if we measure the animal or specimen as like this way and give it to the expert. So the data is useless. So especially parasites. When we found parasites inside the animals, they are they are looks like these shapes. But we have to make it as like a polar pole, and then even like this one, because uh, especially these are cestodes, the cestodes and uh, trematodes. Trematodes and uh, this one is a monogenian parasite. Likely this kind of a plant dehydrosis, so they have a very soft body without cavity. So without proper procedure, when they come uh, or formalin and others, they are just shrink and then not able to uh, do the additional research anymore. Okay, then uh, I will explain about the current situation on these kinds of morphological identification and the related problems. What happens? No. Yeah, I already explained that the number of taxonomists are going to decrease. And actually, the number of taxonomists are already going to decrease, but even the remained uh, taxonomists uh, just focus only covers some groups only. So, uh, mostly the, this kind of taxonomy research was performed by European and American parasitologists, but they have their own area. So, after some big guy retired without successor, then there's uh, no any experts on that field anymore. And it's a now it's a nowadays a, it's a kind of a big problem in the world. Uh, some uh, some of the countries are now uh, now just going to develop their own skills and researches on the parasites. So some countries and uh, some parasitologists they publish a lot of paper, but it seems like they are not trained well, or sometimes sometimes they try to do publish as many as possible with a very poor quality publications. And this one is a likely a kind of a good thing, so the development of artificial intelligence. So we can get some more benefits and then we may can use it for more researches. Yeah, it's not good. Please. Okay, so I already explained it's uh, because of the low impact factors or low, low interest. So, so, and then they are, especially for taxonomic researches, uh, it's uh, very famous with the high self citations. And these are the parasitologists I learned, they are teachers of mine. 
He is a professor, Thomas Schultz from Czech Republic, and she is a she passed away several years ago, and she is all very fine, and she is a grandmaster, kind of grandmaster of Namatut taxonomy. And then, likely these big guys are just passed away, and then uh, this picture was I took uh, four, five years or five years ago in Korea. So he is a John Mario from Switzerland. And then he is uh, Thomas Creek from Australia, and she is uh, Olena Kulai from Ukraine. And except her, the other two members are already retired, and then, yeah, of course, they are still worth, but they will not continue to do research. And now, nowadays in Korea, the younger generations try to use a term called identification. Actually, it's a funny. It's a funny and hilarious term because uh, uh, many parasitologists and medical doctors and veterinarians they they say themselves they can do identify some species by morphologically, but I, I think I already explained some moments before. They, they when they found some parasitic egg or some parasitic materials, they just uh, find, try to find a similar picture inside the textbook. And then just to decide, okay, this one is this one. <laughs> so the name A and B. Yeah. That's from the teacher. So that, and, and yes. Oh, yeah. So that's why it's the reason why the, some of the parasites are recorded as uh, distributed in the world, cosmopolitan. But actually, it's not true. And then mm -hmm. without a great identification, some of the researches are useless. And then of course, it's not only for the Chinese parasites as well. So, just a few years ago, we just realized some uh, patients infected with malaria was uh, actually not uh, known, infected by no species, but uh, kinds of uh, additional other species came from monkeys. Yeah, like these papers, it actually this paper was uh, published several days ago. And then likely this kind of researches and new species were accumulated with this kind of very poor descriptions. So I also I already have a similar species and then this one is a patagipa, same genus, but the shape is a little bit different and somewhat similar more. Actually I grow this one my and it's not happened not only in the, the kinds of the developing country but also in Korea as well. And I also show some papers published by the after research in Semana. Also have this kind of problems. I, I was surprised that when I searched some literatures published from the Semana area, and then I realized there's a one report. Of the Chronopis sinensis, it's a very important little group of East Asian people. And now they said that because of the developing of the artificial intelligence, maybe some people said maybe we don't need the people of the taxonomy anymore because the artificial intelligence can do recognize everything and they can check all the malaria and also they check the and inside the feces, directly, automatically, but actually it's not true. And then because uh, these are possible when the taxonomists who are, who are experts uh, make uh, some data sets and then submit to the system. So it means if the uh, operator uses something low information or something problematic things to the system, they, the ultimate artificial intelligence can use uh, errors or uh, for kinds of uh, parasites of wildlife, which uh, lack information, they even cannot do anything. Yeah, from this part, it's the last part. So, uh, because uh, I'm a veterinarian and also I focus on uh, wildlife parasites, so I have a lot of skills to. to Investigate all, almost all kinds of animals. I I frequently uh, investigate this kind of birds and sea turtles, and also I've been 
have our experience to investigate the waves and also try to already have experience to do the finalistic survey. So I say including this as well. And then also I reported on most of the cases on the animal problems and the molecular details. And also I work with uh, some public health institution to list on the sugar process because sometimes uh, the officers in the, the college of laboratories they do some uh, news to the article and they say they found the parasite but sometimes they normally report this kind of uh, sugar parasite as well and also I'm um, trying to do matching the eDNA and the real parasites as well also I supported by Korean CDC to investigate the intermediate post as well so you can see the small spots here they are all the larval parasites and also fishes so we have a skill to investigate the metasarcaria or other larval parasites inside the fish body yeah and maybe it's uh, almost the last uh, slide so i have a lot like earlier this kind of i have experience to do this kind of research and skills so I know your country is a huge and then you can include a lot of biodiversity. So it's quite expected. Uh, so unless uh, if we have uh, some more chance to do the collaborative work and then if someone have an interest to my research, then maybe you guys can join my team and then do sure. the research with your own materials as well. I'm gonna join the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I also have a great interest on in this thing as well. Uh, because uh, Indonesia and Korea is uh, included in the, one of the biggest and the largest migration routes for the many kinds of migratory birds. So my research was focused on, many parts of my research were focused on migratory birds as well. So maybe, maybe one day we may can be work together and then we can check their Life cycle and it goes in. Yeah. It will be really interesting. We can see like the migration of parasites from north to the south. Yeah. And then like what's differences and what the life cycle changes mm -hmm. between the north part to the south part. It will be really interesting. Even in Indonesia, also from the west to east, the yeah, 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 yeah. also different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I realize that in some some southern areas. Some birds that they try to follow this line to go up to Mongolia. Yeah, sure. okay. Korean birds they go to Mongolia and then it seems like that they do together. Yeah. So maybe they share parasites in here and then yeah. Yeah, whatever happens. It's very yeah. interesting yeah. and then it's future topic. Yeah. It's like you can see the knees and sure. the knees and also the um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, really, really interesting. The parasites of the sea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My talk is over, and then uh, unfortunately I forgot to bring my name card. So yeah, please take this part. Uh, maybe you can take a picture or for like now my email. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, my email address is very easy. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and my school. Thank you. Thank you. Questions of choice. Uh, I think you are the one person that uh, the one of happiness person that <laughs> make the crisis in the place. Okay. Uh, I think in this room, any question for 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 choice? Or we move to the Zoom uh, meet. Any question from? It's for we have to see how does the pathophysiological process of the parasite inhibit the formation of KPP, which causes sufferers to become tired easily, get sick easily, and have difficulty concentration, as well as how the prevent it from being detected early to avoid parasite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Y
<laughs> Actually, the ATP and then the isolated chemical reactions yes. are not my part. So yes. Actually, he did on his dissertation about the groups of leads yeah. and oh, this okay. high level but things, but I think yes. it's not, uh, I think it's not relevant uh, to Sector A link avoids parasite, maybe in a general mm -hmm. cases, avoid mm -hmm. like parasite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, about development of this interface. Yeah. Okay, I can answer. Okay. Um, can you explain about the development of artificial intelligence? Yeah, actually, the artificial intelligence also not my part. <laughs> but as I understood, uh, because the, this kind of artificial intelligence was composed with some code inside the computer program, and then basically they learn. So what we for us we just need to understand computers they can learn and then they can get database and then they accumulate the data inside and then make a similar decisions. So simply for detecting this kind of animals uh, as a so by the morphological identification using pictures, videos, and all of others, it means the machines already learned huge data set, it's a lot kind of a situation. So because uh, zebra have a strip, but computer they are not, not just uh, understand this uh, strip pattern itself. They get huge data set when the zebra sitting down, lying, run, or hide, whatever other, all kinds of the data sets, and then they judge it. So similar with these things. So kinds of Kinds of weakness of the artificial intelligence in this human is uh, they can they only can possible to distinguish the parasites which they have a uh, data set. So I think I already said something some moment in, inside my slides um, because uh, this one is the sisters of eggs maybe yeah sisters of eggs because the sisters of eggs are very important. And then it's uh, there's a huge number of parasitologists working on it, and then they took a lot of pictures and then submit the data to artificial intelligence. So that's why they can distinguish this one. But for others, for like there are parasites over like a parasites over or elephants or some big parasites over some named species, artificial intelligence is usually essential. Of course, they can match some eggs or some parasites which have a data, but they cannot do accurately. So, uh, some people said uh, maybe due to develop developing of uh, artificial intelligence, maybe the taxonomists and the, the people who do the morphological identification will lose their job. But actually, it's not true, and then we have to do more and more work to submit more data and more high quality yeah. data as well. So how the accuracy of the artificial It depends on the data set. Oh. So uh, as I remember, two, just two years ago, two years ago, I saw one company, they tried to check uh, using artificial intelligence yeah. to identify the parasitic egg inside the pieces. So we, uh, in my team, we is, uh, we, is, uh, sort of, we uh, provide a lot of the pictures of the parasitic eggs. So when we learn that problem, the artificial intelligence shows almost 95% of our, uh, our trace to identify the parasites. But the problem happened at the moment because uh, we submit our own materials. So because uh, we use our own microscope and then we use our nice scales to distinguish parasitic eggs from this is, and then the quality of the parasitic eggs are just to take the artificial intelligence only get the data of mine. Mm. So if we use my data, they show very high accuracy, but 
just that we collected the same species of parasites from other area picture inside the Google survival. It was very low, almost uh, 50 or less. But the accuracy is going to increase, and then I realize nowadays they even distinguish the back, they, they erase the background, like uh, these are physicists, they erase background and they only check inside here with a, uh, maybe in here, ah, not, not in there. Uh, they make it as a, a grace case, so they discard the differences of color, and so maybe just to pull the famous and the huge volumes of data are uh, available, they can do very high of this and the future. It can be consumed. So if we use uh, artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, I think the function of the taxonomy is still important to yeah, sure. develop the artificial intelligence. First, uh, move the others questions. Uh, it's about uh, helminthology. Yeah, what, what I say? Like uh, in Indonesia, we have a lot of cases uh, caused by soil transmitted helmin in children. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually we we uh, study about the we collect the egg sample from the cases. Not by larvae or by uh, what is uh, the yeah. Uh, so how to how uh, in Korea to study about the uh, not how many biologies in children or in uh, human for identification or other taxonomy points for identification and to find the cases uh -huh. maybe. Uh -huh. So now, now this uh, sort of aspect harness in Korea is uh, show very, very low prevalence, almost uh, less than 0 0.2 or anyway, it's quite, quite difficult. But anyway, if we found it, nowadays we developed other molecular systems, so at least we will try to get um, molecular data first because uh, you mean it's a uh, Coming from human body. So, human parasites are usually researched a lot, and then, uh, I think uh, we have uh, enough database. So, uh, unless we can get simple sequences, we may have understanding. But the issue is uh, not just for research, research, but like in this situation, we have to do the accurate diagnosis and then try to think in how we can eradicate or how we can prevent to impact the game. So we may focus on the other issues. Okay. Just for the purpose for research, uh, we can do the NGS as well to metagenic sequence. And then because of, uh, yeah, in Korea, I show, I, I think I show some pictures related with that fish and then the metacircular and the trematode parasites in here. Because of some rural areas in Korea, the older generations, they still love to eat uh, low fishes, low pressure of fishes. So they, their infection, so nowadays uh, the uh, prevalence of the parasite, total parasite disease in Korea is around the 2%, CDC say. But just the two, among the 2%, Almost all are composed with these kind of uh, fish bone parasites. Because all the generations, they love to eat, and then because uh, Korean CDC want to decrease the free balance, so they investigate a lot in rural area, and then they treated all the people, and the problem happening here, because all the generations, they realize, okay, when I got impacted with the parasites, Korean CDC, they is fat me and they give me fear. So means I can eat again. So they impact it again. So the, <laughs> so the prevalence is not going to decrease in this moment. But uh, anyway, the, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, something another issue. But because of they eat uh, all kinds of fish together, 
So sometimes uh, the parasitic egg inside the feces looks uh, similar to each other, but sometimes uh, they are impacted with uh, several kinds of parasites together with a similar shaped egg. So nowadays we are trying to conduct to the, uh, the kinds of multiple infection or not. Uh, I'm interested about the fish. Uh, uh -huh. In maybe I can say in Monosobo and Bajatagara district that you know, uh, it's still high about uh, being fear to open the vacation free. And uh, in some areas, they have uh, open toilets and in the, the base of. Uh, the, in the base of the toilets, they it's open. yeah, open to they, uh, yeah. More a lot of fish in the <laughs> uh, in the oh, up of the toilet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, we uh, we try to we try to uh, education to to community, but they uh, they feel when they cons cons uh, when they consume the fish. They feel nothing uh, worse in mm. in their body, but uh, so we just try to know how the effect when humans consume a fish that uh, contaminated with uh, worm parasite, especially worm from human faces. Yeah, it's actually quite a difficult question because. Uh, I told you that uh, because Koreans are afraid to infect the parasites because uh, we have a mood. Right? If we impact it with parasites, it means I'm poor man. So Koreans are afraid and they try to, of course, it's a, have a, a lot of problems because they try to hide themselves. When even they impact it with parasites, they try to hide it from outside and then just the bubble it and then no one knows. Yes, it's also kind of problem. But like in this case, so in Korea, we realize the uh, we uh, the, 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 when we impact, when the people infected with the parasites, especially the liver fluid or the colitis, we realize that kind of parasite can induce the uh, liver and gallbladder cancer. So in the mood in Korea. Now just the most of the people just uh, know if we consume this kind of low fresh of the fish and then if we impact the liver fluke, we can die due to the liver fluke and the mass as well. So the older generation just said like, oh, I think that maybe it's a joke or maybe it's just a hell of a They said, okay, I'm hit up to more than I can die. <laughs> And then they kids they consume because they love it. Yeah. But younger generations they do not. So maybe uh, this kind of uh, advertisement uh, because now all the Korean know when we eat fresh of the fishes it can be a problem. So we just expect maybe in the future generations the infection rate will be decreased. But in Indonesia I don't know exactly what kind of parasites are. It exists and then what they can impact because uh, like uh, like this one it's a parasite on the shell shell uh, the people living in rural areas I mean the coastal region some people impacted the salty so uh, like the are impacted with the salty thousands worms inside the one single patient but no symptom. Yeah. Because uh, it's uh, related with the uh, immune yeah. reactions, because they already adapted well with the parasites and maybe nothing happened. But for the other people from the living in the urban area, when they eat single therapies, they can do the severe diarrhea. So maybe, likely in your case, in Indonesia, maybe the people do not feel like uh, these kind of problems. And so that's why it's uh, quite difficult. So I think uh, also with this problem, it should be uh, advertised first about the, the harmless harm of the parasite to people first, 
and then try to find the somewhat intact perfect as like the close with senses. It shall be able to make the answers and words and the worst problem. I think Korea they will consume raw. Because I uh, added to my slides when I discarded it because I realized it's good for the speakers. Yeah, it's true. As like she said, uh, as like for the identifying the mosquitoes, oh, okay. the famous parasites also have a kind of kidneys. Kidneys are famous, kidneys are famous. And then actually these are, uh, I think the most recently published one was uh, 2002 or 5 years ago in that time. So almost 10 or more times over. So, so for that kind of key books are only available to uh, do so much uh, higher taxa. So for example, like just before the Zimas level, we will family the other So means, we can, as like I said, uh, we should conjugate the molecular identification, molecular ecology, and other other. Yes. So we should use uh, all the data sets. So at least we have. So in my case, usually I use the books to uh, reach the family or genus level, and then I collect as much as possible of the related with the literature. And then I need to survey all because. There are no any books or no pages to make list to the species level. So we have to collect all and they need to compare each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, you know the rules. The rules yeah. lies inside the, uh, the better or in the better word the uh, let's see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, there's a procedure that I improve inside the website. So only the, the kinds of loose species, the experts made a very nice homepage. And then for Sestos, of course, uh, there's uh, no keys in the, uh, in the homepage, but the, the, for the Sestos, the Sestologists, including me, they we, uh, upload all the, almost all the literature to the database so you may can use the kind of things if you uh, if you, you uh, try to research on the kinds of groups only. but the other groups we have to get we have to collect all the old literatures and then survey it will take time so uh, the book of identification is uh, underlying still the Guideline. Yeah, it depends. Ah, also, okay. so uh, like the uh, you know, fishes, mm. the metasarcaria, and then as like uh, mosquitoes, mm. mosquitoes mosquito have a key group to species yeah. in Korea, but uh, like the metasarcaria, just the Korea we have it, mm -hmm. but other side of the country I don't know, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. So means so each of the experts must be research. And then they need to make it for their own countries. So I can have to investigate it. So of course I can uh, I can let them know, let other people know how we can distinguish the circular from fish body, and then how we can collect it, know hows, and then uh, how we can distinguish it. But the record and then making the kinds of books or literatures should be good together. 
in Indonesia we have a guideline book, a key identification book, mm -hmm. uh, specific in uh, area. So maybe in Java it's different than Kalimantan, yeah, so, so. like that. Okay, maybe, okay, this is my thing in English. Maybe, uh, let's uh, uh, discuss a little more about, about the interaction of the parasite and the human. Yeah. And then I want to ask you know about the interaction uh, out of the parasite from the reservoir, the, uh, the bird and the other uh, animals. How percent can uh, infect the human? Uh, what can infect the human? All of the parasite of the reservoir. Is it potential of the? It's one. It's one. And then, mm -hmm. uh, how to how to prove yeah, that that the interaction? Uh, so we, we can we can mm -hmm. identify that the parasite can potential or not. Maybe you have to do this. It's a very very important question, but. Uh, it's not easy to say, it's not easy to answer it with myself because uh, it depends on species. Depends on species of wildlife and animals and then related things. Uh, but uh, I can maybe I can say like uh, the person usually the parasites of carnivores, they are usually more dangerous to humans. Yeah. And then most of the parasites inside that uh, the carnivores or of a length in the the ecosystem, usually they are more dangerous. But uh, for example, likely are the ruminants, like the deer, goats, and one of others, and especially because the nematode species, which have a very high host uh, specificity, they are usually not very dangerous. Yeah. But sometimes even their parasites. Uh, and also, it's important to this, uh, check the life cycle stages. So usually, other forms are not harmful to human, mm -hmm. but the larval parasites are more harmful to human. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the eggs and the larvae, and then you know the likely a city circles, city like a tiny people. City circles of the city circles of other tiny species. Uh, Good are not possible to impact the human city surface itself. But egg is very dangerous and almost all kinds of opinion can be impact the human. So depends on the host and then species of parasites and also life cycle. We have to consult all these things and then finally we can uh, estimate they are dangerous or not. But just the uh, yeah, so that is to say how percent of the animal parasites are dangerous or not. Because uh, it depends on how what kind of animals I include. Then the ratio will be changed. If I include a lot of uh, herbivores, then maybe you can say, okay, the herbivore parasites are not very harmful to human. But if we concern only carnivores and some of the like the monkey, it will be really, really dangerous. So it's uh, very important, and then we have the concern, and then we need to think how we can estimate it, uh, make some kinds of standard uh, to evaluate it. But in this moment, it's not easy. It's very, very important. Yeah, it is uh, in my, my experience, and I also wants to get the suggestion about that because my students, my students in entomology uh, do uh, any research uh, collect uh, the insect like cockroach uh, uh -huh. and then the, the other uh, insect yeah. and then we, we uh, identify the parasites in there yeah. but, and then, what is the conclusion? what the next like that? <laughs> because we want to yeah you want to know if it's a potential or not. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So usually parasites of insects are not very hard to cure. But of course they can act as a antigen of the immune reaction. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of potentials for all mm -hmm. kinds of parasites. And then especially the I think the nematodes of the property is very important because they live near human yeah. 
habitats and they it can be a low chance to attach human life. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Actually, it's a somewhat different topic, but uh, I, I have experience. <laughs> I have experience uh, with the uh, cockroach parasites. Mm -hmm. I, I I showed some pictures. I, I once I have a uh, experience to working in the rural area in China. And China is CDC and then the president, the, the, how to say, the chief of the laboratory, he, he asked to me, do you know, can you recognize this one? And then because people say they found the, the, the nematodes make a nematitis on the skin. Uh -huh. The nematodes. So they said they can find the nematodes from the skin. When after, and then they said the sure but then they have a very important uh, sure message for the nematodes, but it is uh, they collect the uh, cockroaches and then they scrub cockroaches on their skin. And soon after, from skin, nematodes are coming out. So the case is this person asked me, what happened and what is the person? Please uh, identify it. So I check it and I realized they are just a parasite of the cockroach. And then because of the scrub, cockroaches inside to their skin. So the nematodes inside the cockroach are showing looks like a skin problem. But actually it's not true. So we have to care seriously and then we need to want some good Thank you. Uh, any question from Julia? How national program to eradicate human in pregnancy? Pregnancy. Pregnancy means uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mother. Yeah. Yeah. mother. Yeah. How national program to eradicate? In Korea, we don't. We don't have it. Because uh, we just we just say, uh, uh, we, just say the, 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 we have a very low infection rates, and then among them, most of them are parasites of the fish, but as a very as a very fish from the so usually we do not care, but uh, but we have uh, some cases of the enterobius, you know, king ones in from the ladies, and then we have cases of uh, the vagina invasion of the so we just uh, say to mothers just to need to care hygiene, and there's a no national problem, but uh, the mothers they care about the toxoplasm issues as well. Yeah. Just to care, but no problem. Oh, oh. They are individually they care. Okay. Uh, any question? Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you for uh, a lot of uh, information and sharing talk. <laughs> so we have uh, a, a big difference. In Indonesia, we have a lot of cases <laughs> of helminthiasis. <laughs> so maybe it can uh, be the next project. Yeah. Especially in Wonosobo and Banjajagera, because uh, we, we never uh, found about the uh, uh, publication that claim uh, the impact of the fish that uh, in their area, uh, how the impact with the human uh -huh. health. So maybe it can be uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's okay. okay, thank you, Prof. Um, uh, maybe we can move to the next agenda. And thanks for your sharing. Thank you very much. Uh, I will give back to the master of Thank you. I hear the question for Thank you very much, Ms. Lisa, and also Dr. Okay, thank you very much. And um, our next agenda is.
lunch, having lunch, <laughs> which we will uh, continue our uh, visiting professor at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we would like to uh, let you have your lunch break until 1 p.m. Thank you and see you at 1 p.m. Okay. Okay, um, we have one missing agenda, which is the most important. <laughs> we will have a photo session, so please to all of you to uh, stand right in front and someone will have our picture together.